Hi, my name is Matt. I'll give you an overview of Light Jams and all its features. Let's start by what's called patching the fixtures. In other words, we need to tell Light Jams the fixtures we have and where they are. You can access the patch window by pressing this button here or going in the view, patch menu. In the patch window, at the left, we have the fixture library. That's all the predefined fixture coming, coming with light jams. You can browse around. You can search. And if you don't find the fixtures you need, you can always create a new one by pressing the new button here or going in the view, fixture template menu. In the template editor, you simply click the attributes like that and you basically follow the fixture manual you have. You can create as many modes as you need. And when you're done, just press save. Now, I would go back to the patch window. In this tutorial, we'll do a little pixel mapping project. Just imagine we want to put RGB LEDs all around a window frame. So I'll use the generic RGB fixture template. We'll use 100 RGB LEDs. I will patch them in four parts, the top, the right, the bottom, and the left parts. Let's start with the top. I'm giving each part a group name so I can better order them later and sort them. Here for the universe, you can select USB, it's for the NTECH and the DMX King uh, dongles. You can select ArtNet or SSEN. Since SSEN is very popular for LEDs, I will use SSEN. Now I'm, pa I'm patching the top of my window. Now the right, the bottom. And finally the left. As you can see in, the, in this list, I have 100 fixtures. If you, if you ever want to ch change the addressing, you can select them all and just offset one of the fixture like that and every fixtures have been offset. You can change the universe too if you want. I can use the Sagan universe. <clears throat> and I will just show you how to change the SSEN settings, for example. All settings are in the view configuration window. Here you find all this, the settings in Light Jams from the music, MIDZ, the Wii, Hardnet, SSEN. That's here that you can set, for example, the first universe, the first output and input universe. So let's say I want the output universe 100. Now I'm going back to the patch window. As you can see, the SSCN configuration has been updated here too. So we're now outputting to SSCN universe 101. That's it for the patching. Now let's start creating our first intensity effect. In this list, we see the attributes corresponding to the patched fixtures. In light jams, colors are represented using the hue, saturation and intensity color model instead of raw RGB. Now I will create the pixel mapping for the window frame, starting with the intensity attributes of the top part of the window. As you can see, I can type keywords in the, in the search bar to narrow down the list. Now I select them all. And to put them on the grid, I can paint them like that. But that's not the more efficient way in this case. I can undo that. I will use the, the array mode. Click the array mode. I want uh, an array of width. 25 and then I click the first cell of my array and that's it we have a line of 25 attributes I deselect them all to continue working Control D 
and then I continue with the right side of the window. Select them all. Now the width is 1. Then I have my right side. Ctrl D. Now I'm creating the bottom part of the window. Select all, width 25. I can just go here, paste them. You can move the attributes around just by dragging them. Now you may notice that they are in reverse order since we want the attributes to be clockwise, always in increasing values, ID. Now here they are in reverse order. So I can go in the edit attributes and then flip horizontal menu. That's one way of doing it. Or I would just delete them and replace them. I can sort them in reverse order right here. And when I will paste them on the grid, they will already be reversed. That's another way of doing it. Like that. Okay, so now the left side, an array of width 1. Okay, now we have our full window frame. I can click the monitor button here. This will give me a preview of my window. Right now, we don't see anything. That's because there's no power going out to the fixture attribute. To send, at, to send power to the, to the attributes, I add a source. That's a power source like that. Now, if I send a little bit of power, as you can see in the monitor, as I move my source around, there is light going out. A source has many parameters. The power, the range, the delay to create waves, the X and Y position, to move your source around, you can also move it manually. The direction. And finally, you have to know you can link any sliders in light jams to an input mode here. It, it can be DMX input, OSC, MIDI, music, and a wave shape like a sinus. You can even link the X position to make your source move around. We now have our first intensity effect. You can use as many sources as you need. For example, I can duplicate my source by using copy and paste. And now I have two sources. I can select them both and change the parameters of both, of both sources at the same time. As you may notice, we only see red. That's the default color in light jams when nothing is specified, since we don't have any U effect yet. The white, the white color is because 100% intensity is actually white. We can change it. I can select every intensity attribute. I will toggle the edit mode. That's a really useful shortcut. Control Q. Now I can select all attributes and I set their maximum to 50%. Now we don't see any more white. If I want to add a little bit of white, I can adjust the maximum. Now we'll create the U effect to add some color to our window frame. Since I don't want to redo the same mapping I have done before, I will duplicate my intensity grid. We now see the grid manager window. Light Jams has created for us a few groups and grids. It's up to us to use them or not. For example, I can delete the one I don't need. I can move groups and grid around by drag and dropping them. And at 
the group and grid level, we have an activation and a speed slider. For example, at the group level, I can deactivate all the underneath effect. I can dim them like that. I can speed up all the effects or slow it down. We have the same control at the grid level. And as any slider, I can link the slider to an input here. That's the same thing with the master intensity and speed. If I use the master speed, I'm speeding up, I'm speeding up all effects. And same thing for intensity. Now here, I can delete the grids I don't need. For example, the color, the pan and tilt. I can rename the copy I've done to you. Now I close the grid manager by pressing Ctrl G or the X icon here, and we're ready to start the U effect. As you can see, we still have the intensity attributes. There's a ready ND shortcut. If I select all the U attribute here, select them all, I'm going to edit attributes and replaced by list selection. So in one click, every intensity attributes have been replaced by the corresponding U attributes of the same fixtures. Now we have lots of color, maybe too much color. I can restrain the color by selecting all the U attributes and there I can choose one color or a range. Now I will stop, I will recreate new sources, just one to create a nice gradient, a nice quiet gradient. And that's it, we have a nice gradient. I will now show you how to create an intensity effect that isn't using the window frame layout. I will just create a new grid, going back to the grid manager. I will create it, I will use the intensity grid of the scene tree group. I can resize the grid. Let's resize the grid. 100 tall. I'm selecting the intensity attributes. I will paste them all on the same line. I'm adding a source and then full range power I will be using the pulse I'm adding a delay direction now you see the result we have both intensity effects running at the same time I can add a little fade out I'm going back to the grid manager to show you how to activate your effects. You can press Ctrl G. I'm selecting the scene one and then look at the monitor while I'm putting down the activation slider. Now it's deactivated and we're seeing that only the pulse effect is running. You can reactivate it. One nice thing to notice here is since you can link any sliders to an input value in Light Jams, you can link the activation slider to a DMX input. Just click the DMX button here. You can select the universe and the address. And you can link every FX with a DMX input in Light Jams. This is very useful to use an external lighting console to, con to control and to trigger your FX in Light Jams. The last thing I want to show you is one of the most powerful tools in Light Jams, the scripting engine. I select the source with the pulse, the pulse shape and I click the nuclear icon. And what I see is the formula that is used to generate the pulse. So 
So it's a one second pulse uh, with a duration of 0.06 second. You, you have hundreds of function and variable that you can use in your formula. You can press help to see it. Here you have many, many, many things you can use. You can use every inputs in your formula. And I can show you a, a more complex formula to finish. I click the music and now we're, we're seeing my voice here. I click a music band, I select, I want to track the beat. And then I click again the nuclear icon. And here it is the formula that is used to detect beats. That's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching and have fun with light jams.